Um, we talk about performance or bonus deals, how you want to uh, say it, and what you see the, in the last years that agencies don't work with a fixed retainer, but say, okay, we maybe we have a fixed retainer plus a performance fee or only a performance fee, and we will discuss why, why agencies are doing that and why it can benefit the e-com owner. Yeah, I think all of this stems, because this is sort of how Consultex was built, right? Like, there's a lot of programs out there without going into too much detail um, that will promote, okay, you can charge one to 2K a month for a, or to a client, um, regardless of what kind of results you get them, um, you get charged or you charge the client based on value, not on time, etc. cetera, uh, which is true to a certain extent, but what that has led to or resulted in is that you'll have a lot of unqualified, unprofessional agency owners, quote unquote, that are just regurgitating what they hear on YouTube uh, for a fixed fee, regardless of whether or not they make the client's money. And what happens then is the client will get burnt, will be more reluctant to take on another agency that could have actually been getting them results. Um, so what the more experienced agencies have then started doing is offering like performance fees so that they only get paid if the client makes money. And what, because obviously, you know, all three of us do that um, in, in most cases, what that has resulted in, for, for at least for myself, um, and you know, for you guys as well probably, is that I've actually been able to charge more for my clients. Um, and you know, obviously, because I'm so focused on making the clients more money, they're more than happy to pay me more as well than just that standard fee because they know that I'm making it back you know, uh, 10 times exactly. over for them. It's like, I think it's mainly just stems down to like, how, how is the core business being set for it? So I think it's like you have to make the difference between, let's call it old school agency, Let's call it new school agency. Yeah. Like an old agency obviously is like, you know, hey, uh, owner, senior, junior, marketer. Yeah. And there may be an intern. Yeah. So obviously for them, it's like the intern basically does the work mm -hmm. together with then the junior market pushing buttons. Quite often results aren't there. Senior marketer calls the client, satisfies them next month. Yeah. Rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat. You know, and of course, I'm kind of stereotyping now, but it's just to give the example. Mm -hmm. And if you have such a structure, the only way that works is a fixed fee, yeah, because yeah? that's how you basically fill fill your office with with hats with people yeah. that put forward on cases, and that's how you can make the business work. Mm -hmm. Like by doing so, of course, you're basically in the business to getting clients. Because the only thing for you to grow the business is to work with more people. Yeah, that's how you grow. And like in my opinion, is like I don't think it's it's a fair way. Because then technically the people you work with, you don't start to see them as people anymore. They basically just become hats to fill your bank account. Yeah. And so if you go kind of like the new school way, it's like for kind of all three of us, it's like we have no interest in working with 20, 30, 40 people. Like no. I just want to work with a core group of people who we can help, we can provide value and get them from A to Z. So yeah. we grow with you. If you go high in a certain amount, amazing, because quite often the ads or the emails had a big part in that. So, okay, we also make more because the client made more. Exactly. If you have a lower month, because I know economic factors, there's a problem with stock, whatever the case may be, we also go lower because you basically take the pain with them. Yeah. And I think it's that's the way how, at least I want to have relationships built with who I do business with because then you have both each other's best interests at heart. Yeah. And yeah, that stems, exactly. I think, where the whole back-end deal comes from. Now, obviously, we could also just take cash on the back. Not just joking. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like, it's just a perfect way, you know, and it's, uh, of course, like from an, an e com owner, let's say, it might be that they think, but I don't know uh, what I'm up to. Mm -hmm. That's a fair, completely fair argument to give. But then it's also, well, you do know what you're up to. Because if you grow, you know, okay, these guys have provided extra work for me to get there. If it goes a bit lower, hey, they also take the, the hit. So to yeah, say. Yeah, yes, and if you make it more like an example, for example, if you are uh, getting thousand a month, for example, to do some to do some work. For example, you make four ad sets, you get four campaigns mm -hmm. for whatever kind of campaigns it is, and you get thousand a month, and you do that for five, six, seven months, maybe, yes, you, you will, yes, it's always the same, it's, it's repeating yeah. work. Um, and if you get a performance fee and you see on Sunday morning, well, that's how we work, so, oh, this is an opportunity, and we see in yes. our data, it is an opportunity to make an extra ad. Yes, but it's this customer, I don't care. It's maybe it's not even. Uh, and it's fair you say so, because it's really what's happening. And now you say, oh, yes, yes, but he paid a fixed fee. Why I should wake up at sun Sunday morning to give mm. him more money and I don't get an extra? Exactly. And, and, that's, and it's, a, it's always a hard discussion. And no, I have clients who really don't want a um, performance fee. 
and I have clients where we work with performance fee, and it's always and sometimes difficult to do uh, to do it. But this is always my explanation. So yeah, yeah, you get more results because we have we get a bonus. Yeah, you uh, incentivize. And you also pay exactly. us. And the and the benefit is here if we work on Sunday morning, for example, and it doesn't work, the customer don't pay extra. No, yeah. so was it working for them? Uh, they make more money, and we make some money. Exactly. So and, and I think that's the biggest difference. And in the end, what I see, uh, every customer with performance deal get better results at the end. Always. Maybe not in the first months. That's maybe good to know. In the first month, it's maybe, yeah, but it's also it's for the agency. They need to try and figure out what's working, what's not working. Uh, they learn the client. But after 90 days, that's mostly what we see, as, with, especially with email marketing, as the most successful period. After the 90 days, then we can make the big difference. Yes, and if there's, that, if there's a performance fee in place, what we mostly see the first 90 days, we don't charge the performance fee. That's only the basic fee. Yeah. And after 90 days, sometimes uh, it's sooner, sometimes a little bit later, depends on the product and client and, and uh, what, what, they, what they do. But overall, we see much better results. Yeah. And it's like also, you know, for, at least if I look personally, for me, it's, it's just a great way to get kind of like a kick up the butt as well. Because yeah. it's, it's like a way that allows me to stay focused month in, month out to deliver the performance. Because it's like if you get a fixed fee, it's very easy to get lazy. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah, if, if you're just lazy, doing yeah. the but daily also the routine, team, also the exactly. Lazy. If you just do the daily routine, and that's giving kind of like let's call it mediocre, decent results, and they're happy yeah. with it, boom. Like you're not going to do any extra. And, and the fun part is why have sales teams, sales targets with bonuses? It's exactly the same system. Yeah. And you can say if you have a sales guy in your team and you're paying him. 3,000 a month uh, for, for whatever, but you say you get 3,000 a month, but if you reach your target, you get 10% extra. They yep. do everything to reach the target. Exactly. Uh, when I was in the sales world, when, when I had my own econ business with a lot of salespeople coming in our business, selling our stuff, and it always worked with a target. Every month, every quarter, every year, they had targets, and their salary was based partly or, uh, on their targets, and that was working. Yeah. So yes, and, and but most e owners still struggling and saying, oh, yeah, but what you say, Aaron, oh, I not know what kind of invoice I get and I'm a little bit scared. But yes, you never get a higher and high invoice if you don't sell a lot. So <laughs> No, that's the thing. Like I'd say it's always a percentage of what you yeah, make. Yeah. Well, we percent, yeah, or, or a fixed retainer with those all what we but do sometimes we make brackets and we say, Okay, yeah, exactly. above this above this is uh, this price and what we what we do is we have a limit. So there's the the there's no Fair for the oh, I get an amazing high invoice, and we say okay, but this this is a maximum target, and 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 from there, and exactly. if, if we reach it, for example, every month, then we say okay, then we need to negotiate again. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think performance fee, and there are different ways to do that, but are important, and you see it in more more business, eh? like the sales, you see the sales, you see this, so many things are uh, are performance fees involved. Yeah. So what do you think? Um, so for like the let's say the let's start with the agency owner. For the agency owner listening in now. What kind of performance fee would you recommend to start with? I think it all just comes. I mean, it first comes down to like you need to be able to deliver a result. So I think there's like out of the ten people you kind of speak to, nine of them only have watched maybe a YouTube video. Yeah, and that's kind of what gives the bad name. Yeah, and if you are certain that you can deliver the results, like then the offer really can be technically unlimited. Yeah. you know, because it's like really how far can you go? Of course, you need to want to make it realistic where you really set something where, hey, we need to push, but it's something that actually is achievable. I think there you should just find like, hey, do you want to go the bracket route or do you want to go the percentage route? Like I'm not personally not a big favor of doing percentages of revenue because like it's so hard to It's really, ambiguous. Yeah, you know, it's, it's like, hard okay, to pin down the actual numbers. Because you're always going to have the back and forth. It's like, okay, yeah, but this is the cost we had here. Yeah. Is it involved with the ads? You know, it's like, and it just... Yeah, it evokes just an, an annoying conversation to have. Yeah. Like that's why I just always like to look at maybe like either ad spend. Because yeah. it's like a number. You're not going to spend more if it's not working. Very easy. You know you break even ROAS. If you're above that, you spend. If not, you're not spending. So it's like very easy from, from that perspective. And then there you can just put it between brackets. Yeah. Because then you yeah, can set I goals. I think that's, in my opinion, the best way to go for it. Yeah, I agree. Because that for me, I think that's my source of favorite deal as well, is a percentage of spend with a ROAS guarantee. Exactly. So let's say, for example, a client has a 50% profit margin, which means the break-even ROAS is technically two. Obviously, it's not the net break-even ROAS, but that's the story for another day. Um, we will then guarantee like a 2.5 ROAS or a three ROAS, and then if we hit that, we get a percentage of spend. And it's such an easy close as well because 
the client will always come out on top. And yes, you need to put your money where your mouth is. You need to be able to get those results. But if you're truly in this for the long run, then you should be able to do that. And of course, you know, this means that you'll need to do some due diligence prior to signing the client. You need to do some research, look at the analytics. Is it actually a feasible yeah. um, result to get for the client? If it is, then go for it. Simple example is one of our, uh, one of our smaller clients was on a fixed fee because we had it for such a long time. And then we renegotiated the deal to have a percentage of spend with a ROAS guarantee and the ROAS guarantee was three because um, her break-even ROAS was like 1.8, something like that. So we agreed on a ROAS of three. So she, and then her response at first was, okay, so if I, so we got 10% of spend. If I, so, so she said, okay, so if I spend 50K, you guys are gonna invoice me 5K. So I, and I said, yeah, but if we spend 50K, we only get uh, our percentage if you hit the rollers of three, which means you make 150K. And she was like, okay, well, I'll happily give you 5K if I make 150K. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know, you just turned a 1K a month client into a 5K a month client, um, but she's happy as well because she's getting a crazy deal on the back. Exactly. Yeah. Yes, and I think it's important to, to check with every specific customer yeah, what is possible. Yeah. Exactly. It's and every and person and unique. And yes, and make it clear to them, okay, these are your profit margins, and this is the work we do. Yeah. And also, this is nothing to do with the performance deal, what I want to say, but also if you have a client work really see it as a collaboration with your agency, yeah. that makes it also easier. Yeah? And that means communicate well, respond on questions, send in the right in product photos, um, that, that, that will help to speed up everything. As I see with some of our clients, how much work, that's most of the time is going to communication just to getting an approval or getting some, and then I think, okay, it's okay if you want to work like this, I think, okay, we asked you 80 times last month, um, it's fine, but you the results will be lower. Yeah, 100%. Because all the time is going to the communication, and that's, yeah, it's a, it's a neat, and that's also the, the with the performance deal, if you get, do a performance deal and you get some freedom from your client, so you have more freedom to do the, the, the thing, yeah, at the end, both will win. Yes. But you need to give the trust exactly. to the agency. And of course, you need to build up the trust that you cannot say to a stranger uh, is running your e-com store ads or, or marketing from day one. Mm-hmm. Okay, it's a complete carte blanche and, and, and yeah, what you want. I think it also just comes down to you have to set the expectations. Yeah. And I still like to to this day, it's like I always still have the conversation with my business partner. Like you, you need to keep fine tuning that. Because like I sometimes feel like if we if I pitch you the performance deal, which what we we'll always do, like all the risk is with me, yeah. you know, like if after 30 days, you know, we, we are not where we want to be at, like I haven't made anything. Mm-hmm. So all the risk is on us. Yeah. Now, of course I get it that you say, oh yeah, but I'm spending the ad spend. Yeah, but we're not gonna like ramp 30, 40, 50,000 a month, like through your ads, if it's not at a break even row us. No, no it's exactly. gonna be very low until we're testing and then we break the code. And all that time, like all the time invest, invested in that first month, like in really testing, doing the research, like you legit get that for free, mm-hmm. which exactly. we're more than happy to do. You know, like yeah. I have absolutely no problem with that, but I just sometimes feel like it's not really that they understand that. Like if you're two weeks in, they straight away, you know, go an email to, to ask, you know, for, oh, why is it not working? And then it's like, you know, it's like you, you need to give us time. You know, you need mm-hmm. to realize all the risk is on us. Like yeah. you haven't paid us anything. Yeah, and we, overnight <laughs> success doesn't exist. No, and that's, that's always <laughs> exactly. the discussion. What I always hear is, oh, we, we, you just started two weeks ago. We, we don't see any big difference if we just started. <laughs> yeah. What do you expect if overnight it's success? Exactly. Then my, my only answer today is then, okay, if, if that was working, I, was, uh, I wasn't working anymore. If, if I can make the change your store, double exactly. your revenue in, in a weekend, then it, yeah. Exactly. Like if I can then, take your ad account, I can wave my wet magic wand. Yeah. Like, no, <laughs> we wouldn't be sitting here. No. Like I would be on my private island, <laughs> yes. chilling, Yes. and you would have never heard from me. You know, it's like, it's, yeah. And obviously there it always stems down to well, is like how, how well does their backend check out? Because it is, if I just look on, at least on my track record, if I look at your analytics and your backend is rock solid, like I think I've never had a case where it didn't work. No, true. You know, because it's yeah. based on the numbers, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, like numbers don't lie. And that's another reason why, because it's funny, because like sort of when you get into this space, everyone's pushing for the one call close, right? Like you need to be able to close clients on the yeah. spot. And the funny thing is, like our closing rate now or our closing sort of length is like two or three calls. And we do that to protect ourselves. 
like we could probably close clients on the spot, but we want to actually take you know go away from the call. Yeah, I need my look, due diligence. Look, yeah. yeah, exactly. Look at the analytics. Look at the store. Look at the conversion rate. Look at the average order value. Look at the ad accounts. Is this something that we want to take on? Okay, well then we'll book in the second call. And you know, again, that just comes down to understanding like what you need to do to make it work, mm-hmm. and then you know what kind of stores it's actually possible to, to get those results for. Yeah, and then all stems down to what we said, you know, like how how the business is structured. Like, we're we are not in a business to get clients. No. Like like I said, I have no interest in working with so many people. No. So that's why we really do our due diligence because if we see there is an opportunity yes we can grow with you yeah but if i look at the numbers and i see you know hey like there's just for me certain red flags like it's just not of interest of me to unfortunately take you on no like i'll exactly. give you things that you could do but just right now with us like it just it's not worth your time yeah, it's not yeah, yeah. and it's, it sounds maybe hard to say but it is the truth yeah like simple example is as well like if you want to as an agency owner if you want to continue down the fixed retainer route because you see that as safe let's say you charge two thousand a month and you want to get up to seven figures so you want to make a million in a year <laughs> yeah that means for 2,000 a month, you need 40 plus clients. You need to manage 40 plus clients all on 2K a month to maintain that. Chances are you'll never be able to do that on your own. So yeah. that means you need to hire freelancers, employees, etc., which obviously cuts into your margins. Uh, but it's also very hard to manage that many clients and get that many clients a certain, certain kind of result that they'll stick around for 12 months. Exactly. Now, if you work on a performance deal or some kind of uh, you know bonus structure or anything like that, then you might only need 10 to 12 clients, maybe not even that. Like if you're working with really big clients, you could make, uh, like we've, we've talked about this in the past, right? Where like we've done the numbers and you said like, that's basically a six figure agency from one client alone. So 10 of those clients, you'd have a seven figure agency and you're only managing 10 clients. Yes, and, th- and then you can also have better quality. Exactly, yeah. you can put all your time and effort into this. It's impossible exactly. to handle. Like um, if you have to need, if you work, let's say with 12, let's say even 14 clients, like you can invest, Basically, seven days a week, 24 seven, all your research into those seven clients. Exactly. Even better if all seven are in the same niche, because then the research you're doing applies to all Everyone. seven. Yeah. So what you test in A does also work in B, what works in B also works in C. Exactly. So basically you have yeah. a whole bubble, you have that bubble and you control the bubble. Yeah. So basically every person that comes into your bubble is just gonna shoot up. Exactly. Yeah, and that's like really where, where I think in my opinion, the magic then kind of comes into place, because then you can grow with them, and then there as well, if you charge the, the percentages, um, with, with 14 clients, you can easily run a seven figure business. Yeah, 100%. Yes, yes. And, and that's again from the agency perspective, but uh, as e-com owner, if you listen, don't forget your business will also grow and you don't get an invoice if you have no results. So yeah. no, that's, I think th- that's the, the big difference. And for some, that's super hard to understand and they don't understand why they get an credit card charge or an invoice for 6K after a month. But yeah, maybe they make uh, 600,000K that month. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think as an e-com owner, if the agency that is now pitching you their service is not willing to do a performance deal, that in itself is a red flag. Exactly. Like why are they hiding behind the fixed fee? Is it mm-hmm. because they're not confident in their own service? Or is it, be, you know, what's the specific reason behind that? Like you said, it could also be that they just have an intern on it and it's just a numbers game for them because eventually they want to exit yeah. out of their agency. Exactly. Um, they know that they take on ten. And, and One exactly, out of ten is going to work. Exactly. And that's exactly what you say. Just if they, um, if they behind uh, hiding uh, behind a fixed fee, that's strange. That's the reason that we also we new all, all our new clients are only performance fee. Yeah. Because we see that's a more fair deal, and we see when we see an opportunity, we can make some people available in the team, even at midnight, for example, to, yeah. to change things, mm-hmm. so to to create some amazing things and get even better results. And with a fixed fee, yes, at 5 p.m., uh, the, the phone is, uh, is off, for example. Yeah, exactly. And with a performance fee, yes, also my team is willing to earn harder. Yeah, yeah. I think as a, if, if it's performance basis, it's more like a collaboration rather than an yeah. agency client um, exactly. deal. Because that's like, why, you, you you know, you should never call yourself an agency. No. Because, like, basically, if you say I'm an agency, you're basically saying, oh, yeah, I'm that glorified person charging 1K, yeah. 1.5K, and that's I, it. I think the, yeah. the, the agency, like, the, the name agency it's is budget. now, it's been slandered. Yeah. I think, like, right now, we call ourselves like growth partners or growth consultants. Um, and in my opinion, um, we come across as much more professional and much more hands-on by calling mm-hmm. ourselves that. Yeah, yeah th- that's important to, to don't... Um, call your marketer or the growth consulting is a better word. Yes. Yeah. And that's also maybe a good end for this. Yeah, podcast. exactly. Yeah. Cool.